Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's very special show will fe is featuring four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler. Welcome. I know you're in Marina Del Rey. Uh, I see the sun up. Sun's up early. I did my morning walk this morning out here by the water and uh, <laughs> trying to catch a little bit of uh, that California, those California vibes a little bit. Do you miss being out there? I know you've been in Vegas for quite a while now, but I mean, you were a yeah. California guy for a long time. Yeah, you know, I had a I had a place in Orange County, which was you know forty five minutes from from Venice Beach. I never really wanted to get into that cra crazy riff rafts of Gold's Gym Venice, and I was uh, you know I was out there for t about two years before I moved to Las Vegas. But I actually had a condo here, right around the corner from where I'm at for the past like six years. I got rid of it and. Uh, Let's see, I got rid of it about 2016. So, I mean, I, I do plan on being eventually back this way, uh, even if it's just part-time because, you know, I, my travel schedule is still crazy. I plan for it to continue to be crazy. But uh, I still like Vegas, man. It's just, yeah. you know, but the sun's the sun's a little little better out here and uh, the weather's a little better. But, you know, Vegas still has its perks too. Yeah, sure. Did you, How much money did you make on that condo you sold? <laughs> I actually did okay, but I did I did okay. I mean, market's still pretty strong here. Yeah. And I, you know, I was talking to Chris actually about you know I want to do one of these tear downs here and be kind of like outside Marina area, uh -huh. uh, in a place called Mar Vista. That's kind of where yeah. I'm looking right now. So nice. I'm getting some listings, and you know, I was actually in Vegas looking at some houses uh, actually two days ago. So I'm always looking at different type type of properties. How do you, Jay, Jay, I always wanted to know, how do you keep track of all your businesses you got going on? I have people contact me all the time saying, did you know Jay Cutler's into the CBD business in Vegas? He's yeah. really big out there. You're into everything. You got your hands in, in real estate and business uh, and yeah. CBD, supplements. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of stuff, man. You know, and, and uh, you know, it's just opportunity comes, I guess, when you know a lot of people, a lot of it's networking. And I always tell everyone, Dave, like, uh, and you know this because you've been in the business a long time. A lot of a lot of these things, it's networks, right? You have to, you you get to know people, and you know some people you like or you dislike. But I mean, I think ba everything is based off relationships, and I think that's yeah. the whole thing with even the supplement side is, is you know the opportunity arises when when you put yourself in places and you communicate and you interact with people. And you know, I was always an introvert, right? And uh, I had to learn to be much more uh, open about you know, what I do. And you remember, I let people into my life. That was, I mean, if anyone could ask me right now, <laughs> Jay, how do I kind of mimic and try to get the following or how do I, even social media, like, listen, I'm not a social media guru whatsoever, uh, but I can promise you, if you let people into your life, I mean, we just kind of discussed as the show was starting, like people want to see what goes on on a daily, not just, okay, we're going to the gym, working yeah. out or this, uh, it's like people want to get in your life a little bit and right. see like what lifestyle is. Cause that's really what intrigues people the most. And I think that's really the networks allowed me opportunity to really expand my, my whole, uh, entity. And, you know, I'm, I'm involved with a lot, a lot of different things. Remember I started in construction, so I'm sure I mean the real estate. real estate i didn't move there for the win the mr olympia i know i mentioned that a lot but i actually went there after 9 11 to buy property and it was advised to me through my accountant and of course chris Acido was like the cheerleader like yeah yeah go, make <laughs> yeah style. buy more buy more <laughs> yeah buy more now um before the mr olympia this year I, I reached out to you and i wanted to get you on to do a prediction show and you and you basically texted me back there's nothing to talk about phil wins number eight were you shocked to see that phil did not win that number eight um, I wasn't shocked because I think, you know, everyone is beatable on any day and it just the opportunity arise that he opened the door for almost anyone to walk through it because, you know, listen, this is the thing and I want to correct that. I did watch the show. I did hear what Phil had to say and I know there was mention and you kind of, Dave, stirred that up a little bit. I feel like, like oh, you know, what, how do you feel about, about him, you know, favoring Sean and favoring accessible to me and Sean predicted that okay this is going to happen I'm going to beat Phil this and this and this and I thought wow you know he's very very confident but it wasn't at, at any point that I was Sean's cheerleader like hey right um yes I'm hyping him it's just that he was okay I want to be on your channel I have a lot of stuff to say 
Uh, I didn't have communication with Phil, so I could I wasn't going to go to Denver and, and interview him. I happened to be in Venice for business or whatever, and I interviewed Sean that time. And of course, that prediction came true. And then you know, uh, you know, he showed up at the show, and this is the problem, Dave. And I'm going to explain something, and uh, hopefully the viewers will understand a little bit. In '07, I almost lost to Victor Martinez. Okay. It was a very controversial year, and I lived the whole year into going into 08 with, okay, well, Jay was off. you got to come back in 08 better. I didn't come back better. So what happened was it kind of started the fire in 07. You know, the judge was like, oh, you know, it was close or whatever. And when I showed up in 08 subpar, I lost. Right. And I think the same thing happened. Phil was told after 2017, fixed the distension, okay? Mm-hmm. He came back in 18 and still had the distension. What are they going to do? It's, you know, we can talk about Mr. Olympia's get these breaks. I mean, that you, you, you know, Ronnie, look at 02 when he came and he got, you know, he was smaller, right. you know, Kevin, should, he should have won and Gunter beat him at the show of strength. He comes back in 03, like a, like a beast mm-hmm. and just destroys everyone. If he didn't do that, Dave, he wasn't going to win. I mean, especially right. with the hype train of me and Gunter going into 03 Olympia. So I think, um, you know, where people might say, well, you know, it should be judged and this and that. But, dude, the stomach's half the body. And Phil Heath, if he's at his best, would have won that show. We all can sit here and agree. Anyone, I think, even watching this, uh, it's not that Sean Roden just now stepped up and he's way better than Phil Heath because he, you know, got this or that. Phil Heath was off, you know. And, and I think it's – Phil needs to just sit back and look at the pictures and realize, like, man, you know, my midsection is not what it was in 11 or right. some of these other years. And – that's the reality. Hmm. That, you know, I had asked Phil about his relationship with you. Did, did your relationship go from like one of you being a mentor more to him to some kind of a, it seemed like you guys kind of split and separated at some point. No, and you know, you know what, Dave, we were, we were, you know, remember, Phil, he's, you know, I helped him with the business side. You know, he, he can, uh, I think he could even attest to that. If you, if you looked at how Phil, his track record was, he picked up every contract that I ever had. He came on. And Muscle Tech asked me specifically, please get Phil to sign with us, okay? Right. So I pushed, pushed, and pushed. He was with Metrics at the time. He, he wanted a certain price. He got the price he wanted, and he signed with Muscle Tech. Well, as he came in, I was exiting. I mean, so there was a little misinformation that Phil gave you. I left in 11 after the Mr. Olympian. Actually, I was negotiating the contract prior to the 2011 Olympia where I expected to win number five. Well, unfortunately, I tore my bicep. I lost the show, but we were already in negotiations and hadn't agreed on the terms prior to that show. So I already had that contention. Okay, I'm not going to get paid what I want to get paid. And and then, of course, I exited slightly after. I actually flew to Toronto and Phil Heath was present when I flew there. And I said, listen, thank you for the eight years. I'm out. Uh, I started my own thing, the Alpha Helix thing. You remember that? Yeah. And uh, the rest is history. And Phil Heath stayed on until, you know, I think he talked about his negotiation. And honestly, Phil Heath tried to get the Jay Cutler deal, and they weren't willing to give it to him, so he he bailed too. What was the Jay uh, Cutler and, deal, Jay? I'm not going to say because it's legally I can't say that. You know, that was part of the deal. is undisclosed amount, but it was it was bigger than anyone's ever signed any deal, I can promise you that, wow. in the sport of box building. And I had that deal for five years. So th- my contract was still the biggest ever. Mm-hmm. I think it will always be the biggest ever. And, uh, you know, but everyone wants the J contract. It just didn't happen. And, uh, you know, of course, part of thing was different then, Dave. Like, let's be real. I and mean, this is prior to social media. Yeah. I mean, this is when they were buying up every page in every magazine. You know sure. how much those pages cost. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, they, they, wanted, they actually wanted to sign me strictly for – a uh, the offer was to just be an international representative. So I, I was going to fly around just to international shows, and they were going to use Phil on the domestic side. But you know, I was still highly in demand. As you can see, sure. I'm still, I think, the most booked bodybuilder on the planet at this point. Uh, being, I haven't won the Mr. Olympia in eight years, and I think that stems back from the networks and still being active out there and and still living the life. Oh, and I. Do you think it was a mistake? Still, Jay, do you think it was a mistake some for Phil to t- uh, Sorry, I think we had some communication problems. Do you think it was a mistake for Phil to turn down that muscle tech contract and to, and to go off on his own? 
Um, I can't say that because there's a lot of circumstance. People don't, you know, people can look at and say, oh, you know, this guy made a bad decision. But uh, you know what? The guy wanted a demanded price. He didn't get it. Um, he felt his worth was probably more. Uh, there was a sway in the business. It was, you know, things were changing drastically fast. Uh, you know, we see, listen, we see Dave, like these, some of these guys are making millions of dollars on social media only. They don't even have any accolades of like winning Mr. Olympia titles. So it really comes down to the hustle, man. Like Phil Heath is still, you know, he could be a dominant, uh, a player in, in any arena. Right. Uh, but you know, it really comes down to your work ethic and what you want to promote and how you want to promote yourself. And, uh, I don't think it was a, I don't think it was necessarily a bad choice because I'm, I mean, he was going through changes in his life. I mean, Mr. Olympia was, I mean, it does change everything. He can he can just live off guest posings and guest appearances as Mr. Olympia. I mean, that, that title carries a lot of weight. Sure. Let, let's talk a little bit, Jay. Um, last year, the last couple of years, you've been going out to Dubai for the Dubai Muscle Show. This year, RX Muscle, myself, <laughs> Sid, will be out there as well covering the show, interviewing some of the celebrities out there. Uh, we also have Nick Blair on the line. Nick, welcome to the show, man. Hi Dave, how you doing? Good. Um, Jay, talk talk to us a little bit, and then we'll have Nick give us some of the details. How what was it like out there in Dubai? The last time I was in Dubai was 1996. There was one hotel and a lot of deserts and a lot of buildings being built. But obviously, you've been out there. Give us the environment and the climate that you kind of uh, experienced. Um, well, I'll kick it off a little bit, uh, Nick. So uh, you know, was it this is the third year going in? So a few years ago, I had a contact. Um, actually through my friend manager Matt uh, he had a girl out there that was I think training at the same gym as Nick and Nick wanted to start you know Nick's an English guy wanted to start this expo and obviously he reached out to me and said hey we'd love to have you out here uh, how can we get you here and we you know we came we came to uh, agreements to come out there and you know work to promote the show he hit he linked up a lot of media to kind of hype it up a little bit and this thing's now taken off this is the third year I'll be heading out there and and, uh, you know, I'm excited. The fans are awesome. In Middle East, Dave, it's like, it's just crazy. You know, and because yeah. of the whole Kuwait thing and, like, uh, Dubai. I mean, it's one of those destination spots that everyone wants to go to. Last year, I stayed probably in the, one of the better hotels. Not the best one, Nick, but uh, pretty yeah. damn close. And it, it cost my, my pocket a lot, too. But, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome, you know. Where did you and stay, it, Jay? Like at the uh, Armani Hotel. Wow, so nice. So, was it was it, it was, as nice as Aaron Singerman's he, hotel that he had there? <laughs> he stayed he stayed at the Seven Star, which I think is a little over the top, Dave. I think it's too I think that's too much, you know. But I think I don't know how much it is a night, Nick. Is that like twenty five hundred a night or something? Or yeah, probably more than that, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't spend that much. I spent about half that a night, but uh, <laughs> it was it was plenty, you know. It's uh, you know, it's it's like a it's like a a blown up Vegas, really. I mean, right. there's a lot of shopping malls and a lot of buildings, and I mean, it's just it's just crazy, man. And I went to do a safari around it, but the show, man, like, there's a lot more people getting involved, and you know, a lot of the athletes are coming out there. I know it's very far for a lot of these guys to go, but you know, the Middle East is just exploding with bodybuilding, and you know, we're still super popular. Even like Dorian Yates, man, like he was, the, he's got, had a lot of people. Uh, out there but what was cool with me is i was able to when i go out there to do stuff with the with the uso i was able to see the troops and right. you know we went over to kuwait after and stuff like that but it's it's just uh it's blowing up dave it's it's really exciting to see uh more people getting involved and a lot of the sheiks are there just you know they're fans of it right? yeah i mean that's that's really that's really cool yeah, I, when I was out there in, in 96, the, the, whoever the, uh, I guess the ruling guy was at the time, it might be the same person, he was, he was at the bodybuilding show himself. It's like, you know, it's like the president going to the, to the Mr. Olympia. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's crazy, yeah. Nick, give us the details. It's, it's December 7th and 8th. Uh, where is it being held? How can people get tickets? What, give us all the information. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, December 7th and 8th at Dubai World Trade Center. Um, yeah, as Jay mentioned, it's in the third year now, so we've really seen a big growth uh, over the last three years. I think Jay will remember the first year was kind of a small kind of sailing club uh, outside, and then we've grown into the National Exhibition Center. Um, so we've actually doubled in size every year, um, which I don't think for any other show globally, you guys can correct me, but I don't think there's any show that's growing at that kind of rate. Sure. Um, I think one of the reasons behind that is is the exhibitors and the business side of things. 
Um, it's, it's a very kind of easy market to come into. It's not too saturated with supplement companies yet. Um, so a lot of people are finding they can come in and do some good business over here as well. Sure. Now, what um, what dignitaries and celebrities will we see this year there? Aside from Jay and myself, of course, being the number one and two oh, people. Yeah, so we've got um, Kai Greens uh, confirmed to, to come back, which is great. Um, he did his guest posing, which you, you probably will have seen. I think you guys posted about it last year. Yeah. Um, that got a, a crazy amount of crowd. All the exhibitors kind of left the stands and... I hate to, to watch. Know, he, could, he could have won the Mr. Olympia in that guest posing, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? He looked that good? <laughs> That's funny. He looked, he looked insane, Dave. Like, insane. Yeah, then we've got, obviously, Dorian, you mentioned, uh, William Bonac, um, some of the social media uh, people say Michelle Lewin uh, is coming over as well. So, yeah, great mix of athletes. And um, as, as Jay said, the fans just love meeting these guys. They don't really get the opportunity to um, as much. So, once a year in the Middle East, we get people coming in from Saudi, Kuwait, Oman, all over, really. That's cool. Now, um, it's a two-day expo, obviously. What, what's the cost to get into it? Um, in dollars, it's, it's only about $10 to get in. Um, we kind of price it um, at that level because we just want um, to be accessible for everyone, really. Um, I think we've seen other expos um, kind of trying to charge way too much, and they don't get the numbers that kind of, you know, keep the sponsors happy. Um, so, yeah, we want to pack it out and we want it to be accessible for everyone. So, yeah, it's about 10 to $15 for a ticket. Now, Nick, I know that over in Dubai, there's certain things that maybe are not quite acceptable that we would ha do here in the United States. So there are certain things you can wear or not wear, words you can say, not say. What should, uh, what should I be uh, conscious of when I go over there so I don't wind up in jail and have to call Jay to bail me out? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I think the media, uh, definitely in the UK where I'm from and, and maybe in the US, kind of maybe blow it a bit out of proportion. I mean, Jay's been here quite a bit. And, you know, if you go down on the beach in Dubai, you know, girls will be wearing, you know, what, what you'd expect them to wear in the US. But I mean, yeah, obviously in the Middle East, you have to be a bit more sensitive. Um, we don't have women competing. It's just guys. Right. Um, but yeah, other than that, for you, I think, yeah, you'll be OK. All right, so I, I don't have to like censor anything that I say then. <laughs> no, you should be all right. We, we had um, uh, the world, one of the world's strongest men last year, Eddie Hall, um, speaking on the stage. And I don't know if you've heard him speak, but every other word was a <laughs> cuss word. So. Yeah, he's a big cursor. Absolutely. Um, hey, what else should people be aware of in what that's going to be going on that weekend at the Dubai Muscle Show? Anything else exciting that, that, that would get people to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get on a flight and get over there? Yeah, so I mean, new for this year, we've got a big seminar stage. So people like Jay are going to be speaking on the stage. You're going to be interviewing all the guys on stage, which will be awesome. Um, I think uh, we discussed briefly, but the kind of education and the market here is still um, somewhat behind the US. So people are really eager to learn. Um, so people can come and ask these bodybuilders questions. They can ask you questions sure. um, and, and interact with people. Then we've got a load more sports, so it's not just bodybuilding. We've got boxing, MMA, strongman. Um, we've got uh, even pole fitness is allowed out in, in, in Dubai. So, yeah, lots of different sports going on as well. Nick, let me ask you a question. What's the uh, status of anabolic steroids in Dubai? Because I know in a lot of the Middle Eastern countries, they're, they're legal. You can just walk into a pharmacy and buy them. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not too aware of, of the, the situation here. Um, I mean, it, I guess it's probably the same as, as, you know, most other countries that yeah. most of them are prohibited. Sure. Interesting. Jay, yeah. um, let, let me go to you for a second. Jay, when you, when you go out there, um, who's, maybe it's you, who's the most popular guy out there in, in the Middle East, would you say? What, which bodybuilders seem to, you know, the, the fans gravitate towards most? Um, listen, I've all, you know, any expo, Dave, I'll be honest, I mean, even this year's Olympia, which I thought it was slower than ever um, at the expo, uh, my lines are still crazy. Uh, so, you know, I try to, what I've kind of done now lately is I've actually spent a little more time with each fan so I can kind of interact a little bit. It's, it's weird, man, because I've kind of got more patience with the expos. I think before when I was competing and I had a time limit and I had to eat so much food and I had to think about the training and the weight of the Mr. Olympia every year. Right. It was a lot harder for me to spend those time at these expos. And now I realize how important it is 
you know, these people are coming, they're paying a ticket premium, right? And, uh, you know, Nick, I think, you know, we I met you first time at Body Power, right? I mean, so you waited yeah. in my line. And it just goes to show, here's a guy that waited in my line to meet me uh, in my heydays, right? And you can imagine, you know, Dave, those lines are crazy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he is now promoting, you know, the biggest show in the Middle East, uh, Expo. And it's just, it's just crazy how things transpire. So uh, that time is important. And I think, you know, you have to spend time with these people. And, you know, listen, there's always a language barrier, right? I mean, a lot of times. But yeah. they just want to, most people just want to take the picture nowadays. But, you know, last year, Ronnie and I were on stage together doing like a seminar, which was really cool because the fans love to see the whole Ronnie and I kind of talking, <laughs> right. kind of chatter back and forth, right? Yeah. So it was kind of cool. And that's a good time always, you know, to see Ronnie is always a great opportunity for me because I have so much respect for that guy. We had a lot of great years, and I know he's going through some stuff always uh, with these surgeries year after year, which I don't know how this last one transpired. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he made the announcement that he probably would never walk again, you know, at least normally. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, we all have injuries. You know, I had to have two shoulders replaced. You know, Ronnie had a back problem. Everything else works on him, you know. So I think that, you know, people are trying to blame his training or the drugs or this and that. And you know what the truth is? You know, when you put your body on the limit, I mean, you know, I'm sure you got injuries. Uh, you know, when you get older, it takes its toll on you, you know, and, and that's what it takes to be great sometimes. Look at the football players with the concussions and they have knee replacements and all kinds of stuff like that. We put our bodies on the line for a reason. I mean, yeah. yeah and if you look at someone like Ronnie at our show, Dave, I mean, he's there for eight, nine hours a day. He, he meets every fan. You never hear the guy complaining. He's, um, he's the ultimate kind of uh, uh, ambassador for the sport of bodybuilding. Jay? Jay, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, Ronnie's, Ronnie's still super popular. I mean, like we said, Dorian Yates had a lot of people there. I mean, Bonnick was there last year. Kai Green, of course, you know, when he shows up is, uh, you know, he's popular. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, he was getting ready to go on stage. And obviously that was the highlight of the whole thing. And I don't know if you guys saw the pictures um, over here uh, that we were posing in front of the, What's the name of that hotel, Nick, that we did the beach uh, shoot? That's, uh, where you said Aaron stayed, yeah. Yeah, that's the Singerman Hotel. That's Aaron. <laughs> that's Aaron's signature, Aaron Singerman's signature hotel. <laughs> Only the best. Only the best for that's Aaron. That's right. <laughs> I'm surprised Aaron didn't offer to let you stay in his room, Jay, you know, so that you could experience the seven-star hotel as well. Yeah, that's funny. Our conversations, Aaron and I, conversations are like, I always, when I stay at a nice hotel, I make sure I send it to him because I know, uh, you know he'll want to go stay at the same one, you know? That's right. That's right. It's always entertaining, though. Aaron is entertaining. All right. Well, guys, it's the Dubai Muscle Show. It's December 7th and 8th in Dubai. Yep. I'll be there. Jay will be there. Uh, Kai will be there. I know that Michelle Lewin will be there. And uh, Nick, uh, I want to thank you for bringing us over. And uh, I think we're going to put together a, a great event. And luckily for all the fans who are watching right now, you guys are going to be able to see all the interviews with all the guys out there because Nick's going to have me up on the main stage interviewing all the stars at, in Dubai. So while everyone else has got nothing going on in December, we're going to give you guys a, a real treat. So thank you, Nick. And uh, thanks, Jay, for taking time out of your schedule today. Of course. Yeah, thanks for coming out the guys as well. All right, and that's good, guys. That's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.